All right, welcome back to the last week of the Power Rankings for the third season of the WPF. Just want to say it was a great season by all the coaches. Really appreciate the hard work that was put in. And we're just going to kind of run through just some final thoughts on each team performed and why I put them at where they're at in these final rankings for the regular season. Now to see how this will line up for the playoffs is going to be a different story. We don't know how that's going to go. But we're going to start off first. We're going to be looking at our number one team for the season, the San Antonio Screlps, who have just, they were honestly like unstoppable this whole season. They only had one little hiccup in the middle of it. Um, I fully expect this team led with the Mega Mawile, the Zero Or. I believe they had two of the three uh, mods in the MVP category. And San Antonio is probably in prime position, if not the favorite, to win it again this year. Surely a close second, but they've been dominating all season. Breeze through their, their conference, which was a very stacked conference as well. And just honestly was an all-out bruise for this entire season. The team comp, just looking at it, was terrifying. And they did what they needed to do to see it, to lock them into the number one seed in the playoffs. And honestly, won't be surprised to see them in the championship again. And number two, we're going to have the Midwest Mawile, who was a new coach this season, was quite... The bruiser this whole season came in and just honestly dominated from the start, making great use of the Weavile, who is uh, making tier two. I've had it. This is the this is probably the these top two teams right here is who I'm predicting to make it to the finals. And honestly, didn't lock the number one seed in their conference. But granted, last week was a meme week, so probably if they would have played Tennessee, would have gotten the win in that last week if it was something serious. We'll find out from the playoffs if they do make it or not to that championship match and possibly get a rematch against Tennessee if Tennessee can get out of that first round as well. But Midwest, just solid, just solid playoff season. Victini, Weavile, great offensive threats, and then everything down the line. Uh, sad to see Comfy didn't do what it did last year, but honestly, it was, it was there, it was there. But this team overall was well-piloted and looking forward to see what this team's got in the playoffs. And number three, we're going to have the Boston Red Sox, who round out the top three here in the power rankings. They've been quite the team as well this whole se this entire season. Uh, probably one of the most tough divisions in the WPF this year as they had just a stacked schedule. And to come in number three, try and make their way back to another, to another finals is incredible. This team was just honestly well balanced. Plus, Ephelon put in a lot of work this season. Pikachu, the surprise MVP, if we're looking at the stats, didn't die. Didn't die. Cool to see the anime mascot doing work. Seismitoad was a great pick, was a great use this season. Zydog was also good. Uh, Mega Scizor's there, you know, but they did solid. This team is sitting there. Is one of the teams that I hope, if I do make it to the championship, that I don't face. And honestly, Boston is in prime position to make another run if they can get past the United Kingdom. And in at number four, we're going to have the Tennessee Red Gyarados, who honestly winning the conference was pretty cool to see. Um, surprise, like I said in the previous video on how this team did, but Team MVP is going to sit here and be the Alolan Muck at the end of it with a 10 and 6 positive record. Did some work. Did some work. Primate, the surprise pickup of the season. But this team was just consistent all season in each of its matches. They were never really out of it. They, the losses they had, they weren't out of it. They were 1 0 1, 0 2. But a strong play. We'll see if they can keep this magic going as they run into the playoffs. I believe they're going to have the. They should have the Grand Raptors. If not, it's going to end up being the Milwaukee Stantler who are going to sneak in there, do the little outside complications. It's looking like from TGS. But Tennessee Red Gyarados, good season. Hopefully, they can pull off a little, we can pull off a little bit more magic here in the playoffs. And number five, we're going to have the Madison Champs to finish off the top five here. This team hiccuped in the middle, uh, but like I said earlier in the season. This is actually, if if they get past Midwest, this is the team that I think is the most well-equipped to handle, like, the San Antonios, the Bostons, the Indies, the TRKs. Like, this is by far the scariest draft still. I'm sticking to that in the league. The trades were enough to kind of fix some of the weak spots that it had. But 
this is gonna be this might be Panda's year to get himself a championship. He's well positioned and look forward to seeing what this coach is gonna how he's gonna be in the playoffs. If he can keep the high rolling, he's uh see he hasn't lost since week eight and that one was Honestly, if that match didn't happen, he probably didn't lose besides that middle spurt, because I remember week eight was a bit of a little hacks fest there, but honestly this was a strong season. They're sitting there, uh, I believe they're third in the conference. And just I'm gonna say it now. Low key pick to win it all is gonna be Madison Machance. Alright, and number six, we're gonna have the Indianapolis Bolts here, who are once again they made themselves into the playoffs. Strong positioning, great use of the Mega Gyarados, 16 and 4, just tremendous a bit, like just tremendous light play the whole season. Prep has been good. Record doesn't indicate how strong this team has actually played throughout the season. Uh, Indy, I think, has a chance. They do have a tough matchup week in the first round of playoffs against San Antonio. I'm not sure if they're equipped enough to take them down. But we'll see how that goes. But another good season making their way into the playoffs. And we'll see if they can get another championship under their belt. Indianapolis always poison position. You got the Jirachi. Can always do some magic. Stats aren't reflected. But Nick and Lego also picks up a lot of kills. And my favorite thing this coach has done all season is made really good use of Noivern. I think that has been like underlooked throughout the season. But the sets have been different from week to week it's really cool to see i think the pilot swine pick up at the end is going to be huge going into the playoffs and we'll see how that is and all right at number seven we're going to have the reunited kingdom who honestly started off the season a lot stronger than they finished it looks like a little bit of a tough way to end against san antonio but reunited kingdom also i'm telling you this gold conference is going to be i don't know who's coming out of that because you got Boston, San Antonio, Indy, and look at this team here, Reunited Kingdom, who's been tremendous for a majority of the season. Toxapex has been an absolute monster. The Latios Mega, uh, honestly, I can see why this thing, we allowed this to come into the league. It's, it's not too broken, in my opinion. It's just average. But Scrafty was great, well used. Um, Volby never did anything, just kind of look at the stat lines there. But this team just overall is very balanced if you look at it and just is not easily chipped down so i think the reunited kingdom can make a push as long as they kind of stick to what they've done in the season that's got them successful making just keeping toxapex alive floor just said low recovery support and just honestly just chipping things down with the thunderous and the scrafty and number eight's gonna be the grand Raptors, who unfortunately Fortunately, are not gonna be in the playoffs, which is sad to see. I like this team. They made a push at the end of the season to lock into the playoffs, just barely. I mean, that was close. They had Milwaukee, who just Milwaukee was unable to kind of lock themselves in. But that's not how it's gonna be. They're not gonna be in the playoffs. It was cool to see the Grand Raptors do their work, do what they did this season. Overall, their team doesn't stick out that much. Anything great. But Mew was there, Gar Chomp's always a threat, and Zerkatry, and just like overall, just consistent play week in, week out. It's not a team that you would expect to just walk, like they would get a free win, even though, like, the record does, they're six and six, but they earned that fourth spot in the season, and honestly, they were a good addition to the league as well. And we're gonna be coming down to number nine, who's gonna be our surprise guest to the playoffs. Um, I don't believe they thought they were getting in either. But, you know, some stuff comes around. But we've got the Milwaukee Stantler who, honestly, if the life circumstances didn't come out, I think the record would have reflected. I think they would have earned that fourth spot. They just, the last few weeks, uh, believe that. I don't think they prepped for multiple matches, which is sad to see because they were kind of rolling. They were, they were a fun team to watch all season. They were just always in the position to upset somebody. And they were the wild card team of the Silver Conference. So interesting to see how they're going to do against tennessee in the playoffs they have a good matchup mega alakazam is a threat Con conkelder is also really good so was it good to have one of the ridge og coaches here in the league making it to the playoffs again so wish them luck going forward and all right number 10 is going to be the seattle skarmory who just had just a bad season just didn't go how they anticipated i think the rough start early kind of put them out of position to make a true playoff run 
And again, they were in a tough division. I believe they were with Boston. I can't remember the division entirely, but the overall conference was not easy. If you look at the team, it looks great on paper. Kecleon didn't do it. <laughs> we saw what it could do last season. Unfortunately, we didn't see what Kecleon and Vaporeon did this season prior. They were, I think people were a little more ready for it this time. But overall, the coach played pretty good. It was fun to watch. They were, they were again, they're like the Milwaukee of the Gold Conference. A scary team to face every week and has the potential to just obliterate opponents. Just just missing out on the playoffs this year. Hopefully next season if they return, they'll be able to make a, you know, a quick bounce back and get back to it because I'm sure they want to kind of avenge last season playoff blunders, but and we'll see how they do. But Seattle, not a bad not a bad season just didn't weren't the results we were looking for. And we're going to actually see a pretty big jump here in the last like power rankings. Um a coach that kind of figured it out late. You know, finally got their team going, and that's going to be the Farmland Farfetched. They sit there, made the trades late, and that honestly, that, that's what they need. They should have done it a little earlier. The Mega Arduino was probably pick of the draft. I'm going to pick it, like, surprise pick of the draft. It did great all season. I eat my words from saying I thought it was a terrible pick, but just was tremendous all season. The Blades of Kin sets coming in. The Terrakion was probably the best pickup. He should probably he made great use of that. So I look forward to seeing what this coach does next year as he kind of went more towards some of the more modern sets that are coming in I believe like just a little it just took him a minute to get going and then he finished the season out rather strong with a little three game win streak and it was just it was good I'm excited to see Farmland kind of keep this momentum rolling into the next season and see what they have to bring they're always a fun fun coach to watch bring interesting sets and we're going to be at number 12 we've got the Miami Manetrix who excited to see what they're going to do when they get themselves their own draft. Because the new coach picking up from one that left off, they were a good addition to the league. I like the energy this coach has. I think if they could have drafted this team entirely, they would have had a better... The season would have gone more of how they wanted. They seemed to improve week to week. They had a good intro. You know, made, made a good first impression, we're going to say that. Made great use of Zygarde, Megalop Honey. Just good coach. Excited to see how the draft's going to be for next season as we're going to keep them, you know, towards the bottom. They're just in tough positions, but honestly, I think next season will probably be more of what this coach can show talent-wise. They did good. Like, it's not like they did bad. It's just, it's always tough taking over for a team that you didn't draft. And we're going to come down to number 13. That's going to be Violet City Vileplume, who started off the season a lot better than they finished. Um, not sure what had happened with that, but just team just kind of fell off four and eight is not a bad record especially compared to the season past so there is improvement by this coach i look forward to them coming back throw rock is a good like good person to have in the league um let's see we saw the cartana put in work top of Vinny was always around um i like that they picked mons that they wanted to use like it was, it was nice to see because like some of these are not top tier draft mons, but like i respect that entirely like it was great to see the like, coach pick mons they like to use like ori Koyo did some stuff <laughs> got me once <laughs> got me once umbreon's always a solid wall i just think this team needed a little bit just a few other pieces it has some like awkward bulk and this it has a lot of setup fodder looking at it so we'll see how they do next year improvement four wins not bad and they're in a tough division as well tough conference you got midwest tennessee and you got to play madison so they didn't do too bad snagged a couple wins here and there exciting to watch I think I still think they had the longest match this season and all right so we're gonna come down to number 14 we've got the great western son of a gun messed it up we got Kronos <laughs> we got Kronos he got me one more time the last video the GWS gladiators messing me up with that title can't get it still like the logo's dope but they they picked it up uh two game win streak to end it solid real solid um honestly Kyron Black's just a threat too bad they couldn't get the Mega Sharpedo going on I just I think we're gonna see more of what we saw at the end with Kronos next season I think he's kind of got it I think he's got it figured out now I think it just it just took him a minute to get a handle for but I think now that he's getting them some more experience under his belt that this coach might actually like this coach could be 
They might make a run next season. I'm just going to say it now. GWS makes the playoffs. WPF season four. Hold me to it. But that's my that's my surprise pick for next season. And number 15, we're going to have the Twin Leaf Tynamo. Who just, this just was not their year. I hate to say it. Duck's a great, great guy, great coach. Just, this team just must not have, this must not have been a good fit for them. They just, they really struggled to get things going. They got some wins late in the season to kind of bolster that record, which was nice to see. But Mega Venusaur is probably the only thing they really enjoyed about it. Entei did, was okay. Just, it was just a tough year for Twin Leaf, and you hate to see that, but some, so there's not going to be a good season every season. So next, I believe season four, we're going to see an improvement as they'll bounce back and probably get themselves back into the playoffs coming into that season. And we're going to round it out in, with our last coach who came in and replaced towards the end. So we're not going to fault him too much. We got the Sutopolis Shelter, who just pff, questionable. Yeah. Uh, the pickups are questionable. Vanillix actually did work though, not gonna lie. Vanillix was not a bad addition. This coach did a pretty good job with that. Just sadly, they just, a little too late to come on and come in. I believe when they, I'm not sure if this, yeah, they didn't get a win since they took over, so that's why we're gonna keep them at the bottom. But just, it's tough to come in towards the end of the season, the playoff seating's locked, and then there's just, it's hard to see what you can actually do against your opponents as well, because most of them are probably not set to play as serious as it could be but that's gonna be the rankings i'm gonna give us a little we're gonna look over see the stat line and see who was the top for the season and let's go ahead and look here and we're gonna round it out with zara aura at number one halucha number two and then you got mega mawile at number three for our mvp list and just tremendous play by all the coaches. We're gonna pan over here, see the standings. You're gonna have Tennessee is gonna be the number one seed going into the playoffs here for the Silver Conference. Midwest is gonna be two. Then you're gonna have Madison at number three. And then we're gonna add in the Milwaukee Stantler is the number four seed for the Silver Conference. And then Gold's gonna be number one, the defending champ, San Antonio Scrubs. Number two looks to be, yep, it's gonna be Boston. And number three is going to be Indianapolis. And number, no, sorry, I take that back. Number three is going to be the Reunited Kingdom. And number four is going to be the Indianapolis Volts. So excited to see how this plays out. Good luck to all our coaches coming into the playoffs. And that's going to be it for the power rankings of season three. Thanks for everyone that joined along. Click like, subscribe down below. And we'll see you guys back for some playoff highlights here in the next coming week. Like I said, leave some comments at the bottom who you think is going to win it overall, who's going to win round one. And all right, guys, catch you later.